In this video, we're going to look at how to calculate the change in entropy for the surroundings. And then we can add that to the change in entropy for the reaction to see, will the reaction go? So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to start with the definition of entropy. So the change in entropy is going to be the heat that enters into the surroundings divided by the temperature of the surroundings. All right, we can draw ourselves a picture. This is our chemical reaction. This is our surroundings. This whole thing here is the entire whole universe. And where is the heat coming from into the surroundings? And the answer is it's coming from the chemical reaction. And so we then know that whatever enters the surroundings must have been lost by the chemical reaction. And so we can make use of this actually. This is assuming that none of the heat changes to work or anything like that. So we can go ahead and we can say that Q surroundings is just equal to minus Q for the reaction. Aha, we know what Q for the reaction is under conditions of constant pressure. That is minus delta H. So delta H, remember, is Q reaction at constant P. So there we can put it all together and we can say delta S for the surroundings now is equal to Q surroundings over the temperature of the surroundings. We're going to assume that the system and the surroundings are all at the same temperature. And if they're not, we're just going to wait until they get there. And now we can say that is equal to minus delta H over T. So very, very important equation here. So I'm going to rewrite this. So the change in entropy of the surroundings is equal to, under conditions of constant pressure, minus delta H for the reaction over T. Recall, when we don't write anything down here, we are on about the chemical reaction. So we are reaction-centric in chemistry. So I apologize if you're watching this from a physics point of view. And this seems to be pretty sloppy, but from a chemistry point of view, whenever we don't write anything below, we assume it's for the chemical reaction. Alrighty. So let's go back and take another little glance at this equation here. So let's imagine we have an exothermic process. So from the reaction point of view, it's exothermic. So that means that delta H is negative, right? It is given off heat. We can look at it from the surroundings point of view and say if it's exothermic, then the surroundings is going to have a uh, entropy change that is minus delta H. It's going to be minus a minus number over the temperature. And of course, the temperature, the absolute temperature, is always positive. So the surroundings will always increase in entropy. So exothermic reactions are relatively favorable. So if we look at it from the reactions point of view, okay, anytime there's an exothermic reaction, it is given off heat. And that heat causes the surroundings entropy to go up like crazy. So this is always going to be a positive influence on the total entropy change of the universe. In fact, we asked ourselves earlier, how can you freeze water, right? So how can you take liquid water and turn it into an ice cube? And the answer is you can put it inside of a freezer. And the thing about a freezer is that internally the entropy might go down because freezing water is a negative entropy process. But if you've ever put your hand behind the back of a freezer, right, it is belching out heat like crazy. So all this heat is coming out into the surroundings and it is making the entropy of the surroundings go up by a crazy amount. And what we find is that the system's entropy goes down by a much smaller amount than the surroundings entropy goes up by. And so when we add it all up for the universe as a whole, we find that the universe's entropy change is positive. So our freezer does work. It is not a figment of our imagination. This process is allowed to happen. So there you go. Now we know how your freezer works, at least from a thermodynamic point of view.